Right guys, full fish room tour coming up. Aquatorium. And there's our man, Pancho. We can all sort of enjoy growing in. Fish are all in there, happy. I thought they were happy, but they look kind of miserable there. And that's annoying. Done. Oh, and that's annoying. Done. Oh, and that's annoying. Done. Alexa, stop. Right guys, sorry about that, here we are. I like to normally have some music on just while I'm doing all the maintenance and whatnot. So lots and lots has changed since the last tour. Um, loads and loads of new tanks, lots going on, but lots about to change as well. Here's the epic Aquatorium. And there's our man, Pancho. Man or lady, I still don't actually know. We've got a little bit of diatoms going on at the moment, as you can see, but that's fine. It's, it's new, it happens in every single setup. At some point, if there's a ton of sand, it tends to be. Um, doesn't seem to happen when I use a lot of aquasol, so make of that what you will. But yeah, look how good this is. I've just jumped straight in in this tank, haven't I? I've not even shown you anything else, but yeah, look how good everything's growing. It's growing absolutely amazing. This is that middle immersed section that I planted, remember, with the Siamensis 53B. Uh, it's got some um, swords at the back. This sword's sort of sending up a flower as well. Got the ivy coming across, all the different ferns. Look at it, it's just looking great. And that grass at the back that I wasn't sure was gonna do well, I think it is. It's hard to tell, it's still green, but it's also got some sort of yellowy bits in it. But then I guess I guess that's what grass has, so. Yeah, so I'll, anyway, we'll come back to that. Right, let's start at the start, which is where you normally start. This is the one I've just set up, guys. It's uh, the idea being that it'll be like a nice little nano. Put my hand on it so you can get a sense of scale. Nice little nano that we can all sort of enjoy growing in. Lots of trimming, lots of you know keeping it keeping it tight. There's that nice little filter as well. That nice little hanging back clear one. Um, it's got just a um, what, what lights that again? It's, it's an LED um, oh, flexi mini. That's it, and it's like seven watts or something. But full color spectrum. Looks nice. I went for a different gravel at the front. See this little weird stuff that's coming on the red uh, red moor root? That's just normal. You get that. That goes away after like a few weeks or so. I don't know what it is, some sort of bacterial thing, but it's not harmful to anyone. Um, moving down. So this is one of the first aquatoriums I set up. It's been a little bit neglected. As you can see, the water line's down from where it would be, but it doesn't hurt the fish. There's only a couple of um, white clouds in there. But this is all being broken down soon anyway because it's had its day. I want to do something else with it. So basically that's being broken down. Um, this was the high tech one I set up that I've just left as a no filter one with a load of shrimp in doing well. Um, I, I basically let it get too overgrown and whatnot and just sort of left it alone. But it's really healthy. It's just, you know, sort of sometimes when you're working on other big projects, you lose interest in others and you can come back to them and rescape and what have you. It's all fun and games. Again, here's the Free Stones Aquascape, which is jam-packed full of plants and look at that L Ludwigia as well, the, the Palustrus. <laughs> it's just growing out but it's so red, look at that. Gorgeous. Fish are all in there, happy. Well, <laughs> I thought they were happy but <laughs> they look kind of miserable there. But yeah, there's tons of um, baby shrimp and whatnot in here. We've even got some sort of carpeting down at the bottom. I don't know how, given the fact that like there's barely any light getting down there, but so yeah, that 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 tank is what it is. This the both of these are going to be rescaped soon as part of the um, low tech nano series that I want to do. 
So obviously that's the first one, and that's the linear composition. Then I want to do an island composition and a triangular composition, just to show the differences. And we've got them then all in a line, and it should look pretty good. Down the bottom here, and by the way guys, look, guys, I've barely done any sort of maintenance on all these tanks. I just thought I'd just do it off the cuff, just do your tour, make it real. You know, no one's got like pristine tanks all the time. It's not an issue. I sort of just do one tank every couple of days. I do a bit of maintenance on it. So there's always sort of a rotation going on. So this is the uh, my, one of my first nano tanks I've ever done. More needs topping up again, but completely, utterly lush and um, healthy. It's just got a few babies in there, baby endler guppies. This was one of the, the second better uh, better aqua terrarium I did. The first aqua terrarium, sorry, for the better. I've just done the second one, haven't I, which was upgraded. It's looking a bit grim, you know. It's, again, it's all clean, healthy. You could put anything in there. It's bomb proof. <laughs> but look at how crazy the Boston moss has got. <laughs> it's not Boston moss, it's Boston fern. But that's moss underneath is actually just converted to um, it's different to how I put it in. When I put it in, it was like really long, but now it's gone this little stubbiness, but covered everything, which looks quite cool, but it's a bit small, that tank. So I just thought, yeah, at some point, I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm getting a cube aquarium at some point coming, and it's going to go in this area here, so that should look pretty cool. 30 by 30 by 30. Right, this is then the, the huge um, no-filter tank. I called it that because it was at the time it was the biggest one I'd had. But it's had its day. It's all healthy. It's it's a success technically. Uh, I just I just think I can do a lot better now in terms of design. So I don't know what that black stuff that's gone all over the rock is either. But yeah, um, this is going. I'm, in fact, after I finish this video, I'm actually starting to break it down. I want to do something completely different. Um, I'm going to do a pebble, like a rounded pebble aquascape. Uh, I did one before in my shallow tank that was like a, a river look, and I want to I want to do that again. I really like that clean, rounded look, and I don't want to have tons and tons of plants in it either. That's the thing. So, and and I'm doing more of a low tech tanks now. So I'm going to put a canister filter on. It'll be be like a just a just a normal canister filter, and I've got some nice glass lily pipes and inlets that I got from a company in China that sent to me. So, again, all the stuff I'm using is nice and cheap because this this tank cost me ten pound from um, you know a used site. It was brand new, but someone was selling it for ten pound. Nice light from All Pond Solutions, which is just this normal sort of LED, cheapy, but it, it does the job brilliantly in my opinion. I remember I used to have the um, LED floodlight there, but it was very spot orientated, so this one gives a much better sort of overall light, so I switched it out. And yeah, as we know, the Aquatorium, this is going brilliantly, apart from the diatoms, that is normal, that will clear, and then all good. Lindophilia is just booming. Uh, the polysperma there, look, doing really well. Yeah, there's not really much to talk about because nothing much has changed. It's just all going well. <laughs> I say nothing much has changed. I mean, if you just look at all of that at the top, it's literally just like a jungle, isn't it? And that moss now, look. Look at that moss. That's the cushion moss that's now grown sort of, it's growing upwards. It's got a real nice sort of fluffy texture to it and it's got all those sort of buds growing out of it. That's how it propagates, apparently, you guys tell me. All that in the corner, look, it's just looking great. Right, now onto the puffer tank. Now, I've got some news for you. There is an upcoming episode. I no longer have the dragon puffer. And the reason for that is because even if I did have him, you wouldn't be seeing him at the moment because that's the thing. I ev only ever saw him when I fed him. And that's not exciting enough for me, especially in this sort of tank. In this sort of tank, you need to have, you know, something more like what i originally wanted was the pea puffers and that's what i'm going to go back to so i took the puffer back i did the responsible thing it was a bit sad because you, you know i did i did like him it's just i didn't ever see him so i can't really enjoy that and it's a, it's a lesson to be learned with all of that is that you always need to do your research and the character and behavior of, a, of an animal before you get it don't buy it on a whim like i did and you know just in excitement i know i could care for the fish that's the thing and i did care for the fish it's just that you know, you've got both be suited to, to what you're doing, and, and we just weren't. But I did the responsible thing, so no problem. You'll find a nice home somewhere else. Next, shrimp tank towers. <laughs> so, tower number one. This is the cherry shrimp one, and that random one Amano that I put in there once, just to test the waters with it. 
I'm getting quite a bit of diatoms with this one and I think that's because I switched from taking out the duckweed. I've put it back again and since then it's all clearing back up. Um, also, I seem to get more diatoms again when there's not much aquasol. So this, this tank doesn't really have hardly any aquasol at all and as a result you can see quite a lot of diatoms. Um, probably needs more maintenance than others as well as a result. But then moving down to the forest star wood only aquascape. Well, I don't have to do anything to this. This has got the crystal reds in. There's one there. And that, this is going really well at the moment. I have to say, really impressed with it. And then moving on to the no hardscape and just plants only tank. Again, going really well. Look at that, it's carpeting. Carpeting like crazy. All the grasses. Uh, I've not done a single thing since this is set up. And some duckweeds even creeped in there as well, but. Um, that, I think it's Bacoba at the pack back there. That's not doing great. You can see it's lost a lot from the lower ends, but the top ends are looking good. So I'm kind of keeping it in there. I think I'm gonna leave it in there and just fill in that gap in the middle with, you guessed it, probably Limnothelia or Rotala Rotundifolia to be fair. But the Ricky is doing really good as well. Look. No, Alternanthum something or other. <laughs> And then of course we've got the ecosystem tank, which I've just released a video for. I'll leave a card to that up in the top right. That's doing really good. I can't complain at all. It's pretty crystal clear, isn't it? Um, I don't know where the fish are. Oh, there's a shrimp at the back just climbing up because I just put a load of shrimp in there, see? So they're enjoying themselves. I don't know where the fish are, though. I've got four endlers, three females and one male in there. They'll come out when they're ready, you know. That's quite a good thing, like you've not always got fish on show when you keep a small amount in a tank. And obviously you need a small amount in a tank like this with no filter, because you just don't want to, you know, increase the bio load too much. But you, it does, as a result, you don't always see fish. So it is quite nice when you do come in and you see them all at the front, all getting ready for some food and that. It's quite nice. Am I moving around too much? I'm not even watching the camera, I'm just watching the tank. And then moving on again to our final one. You guys have not actually seen what I stocked this with yet, so this is the big reveal. This is my no filter nature aquarium. Hang on, let me get rid of all that glare. I love those lights. There we go. A bit better. And that's annoying. Done. Oh, and that's annoying. Done. Oh, and that's annoying. Done. There we go. Oh, for Christ's sake, I need to get some black gloves, don't I? <laughs> Actually, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so this is growing in really, really, really well. So there's the sparkling grammys. Now these are really fun. <laughs> They're quite funny to be fair, because they like, they had their own little territories around the tank. Um, look at that peanut to feeder there. Booming, doing really well. Yeah, they had their own little territories around the tank. I'm gonna feed them now just to show you because it's funny. What they do, they know they know me now and they know I feed them here and they're all happy with it. So they're all sort of just sat there now waiting for me to feed. So I'll plonk some in and it's quite funny because they'll take their food look and then they run off and hide with it. Oh, mine, 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 look. They're all, they all huddle around until they've got a piece. And then they sort of run away, look, look there he goes. He runs away from the area. And then they all come back to it. It's so funny. I don't know why they do that, but it's like they don't like most fish will just stay eating in one spot, but they don't look. See, they dart off in their own little places. No, no, no. <laughs> look, it's funny, please. There you go. There we go. There we come. There's ten of them in there, and there's about four or five Amano shrimp. I'm gonna have more Amano shrimp because, as you can see, quite a bit of mulm generates on the bottom. Not bad. It's not too bad for it. It doesn't hurt the water. I don't think, not unless it's a massive concentration, but you know, I'm doing maintenance on this tank probably once every two to three weeks. So that's deliberate because I want it to all balance. You can't do stuff too much on tanks. If you if you want it to balance with no filter, then you, you've got to be a little bit patient with it all. But yeah, a bit more food there for them. You don't want to over to feed the tank again, remember? But that's looking really good. I'm, in, I'm really enjoying it at the moment, this tank. This is probably my favorite tank at the moment. But yeah, let's go into the house then and I'll show you the bowl I've got and also the new better aquatorium and also my discus tank. Well, I call it a discus tank. I've only actually got two discus now for reasons I'll explain in a moment. 
Uh, but that's just a bit of a holding tank. But yeah, let's go take a look. All right, walking through the house, better aquarium, bowl, kids' toys everywhere, but that's cool. It's a family home. This is the discus tank, right? It's obviously a holding holding pen at the moment for all my plants from Tropica. Because you've got to keep them somewhere. You can't just keep them all sort of, you know, in the in the box and whatnot. They just they won't survive, will they? So yeah, it's a bit of a holding pen at the moment because like, this is all being rescaped soon. Um, aquarium gardens are going to be sending me a lot, lots of hardscape now. I'm supplying with my hardscape, which is really good. It means I can generate really good scapes for you guys on the regular with different types of of wood and stones and whatnot. But so at the moment, yeah, I've only got the two discus now. All the others I've had have died. Um, I know that sounds quite bad, but bear in mind that they were all of them very, very cheap when I bought them. They were like twenty five pounds, which is extortionately cheap for discus like my biggest tip to you guys out there don't buy cheap discus if they're cheap and they're from say like some of the chinese suppliers that send them in they've not really had the meds they need um which was clear i mean the, the stock in terms of genetics isn't good so my fish that i did have in here were always stunted and in fact even these guys are actually stunted when you look at their eye size but they are very healthy now the other ones perished away because of whatever reasons. I think it was internal parasites. I tried to treat for it several times, but they didn't make it. These ones have. Obviously, their immune systems are better, and they're the ones you'd want to sort of breed from if they weren't so small. But I don't care. My family doesn't care. We love them. George there and Sunshine. George, Sunshine. Um, and hopefully they do well. But, you know, you can't... I, I know I can keep fish alive well, so you, I don't... I would never blame my fish keeping it on them perishing. None of the other fish die, um... You probably see that I've got tons of female guppies in here as well. I'm going on a bit of a guppy breeding spree, to be fair, but I just love the movement and the action you get in a big tank with guppies, like that top area. Look, loads going on. Right, I better move on to the next tank because otherwise this video is going to be incredibly long. Okay, right, on the table here, we've got the bowl aquarium that I set up. This is doing fantastic. Now, I know some people were a bit upset about the fact that I had uh, five or six rice fish in here given that they, they're saying they're too, too large, uh, makes it overstocked because there's no filter and whatnot. But if they do get too large, I mean, I will, I will remove them and put something smaller in. But as you can see at the moment, they seem to be loving it. They're not even scared. Look. I mean, I am the one that feeds them, but that's not the point. But yeah, look, everything's going great. Look at that roots, rooting that's going on the bottom there. It's all settling in really well. There's a tiny little bit of hair algae on some of those bits in the middle there, which I'm going to chop away. But other than that, it's brilliant. But yeah, really nice tank that. Wife loves this. Wife loves this one as well. So okay, and on to the better tank. Few changes have been had since I set it up because we're going through again that sort of diatom stage. I've got some diatoms in this one on the plants, and that'll be because of the, just the amount of cereal stone tends to cause it. Like sand and cereal stone, cereal stone does cereal stone mini landscape rock tends to cause some diatoms when you first set up. It's not an issue, it'll all be sorted. Um, I bought a load of Amanos that have been working their treat because this was covered in Dirtoms like two days ago. And now look, it's much, much better. You couldn't really see much green to be fair. Now it's all looking good. The boost in the middle there, they need to get to work on that. So it'll be, it'll be good if I could just put a little sign up at night time when I go to bed saying clean here. But yeah, I think they'll get on it soon because the rest is, oh, hello. Look, he's come to say hello. Look, it's coloration now. He was a lot darker when I put him in because I think he got used to that dark area he was in. But now there's some more light going on. It seems to be much better. Now, the um, Java fern didn't convert as well as I'd hoped. And I think that's because the Wendelov has got these spindly edges, which obviously find it difficult to stay moist. The main bulk of the leaves have. So I reckon regular Java fern, if it was attached to this wood coming out, would have worked well but not the Wendell off, but that's all right. You know, you've got to try these things and see what happens. Um, you can also see, look, I've added floating plants and that's just to help with the sort of settling in of the plants that will be removed at some stage. But yeah, that's this, that's this tank, that's looking good. And that's hopefully gonna be quite nice. I, I did share a post on my Instagram, <laughs> all the limnophilia grown to the top in like three days. So <laughs> that was a bit crazy. I might have to think about whether or not I want to keep that in there at a later stage. But again, that is perfect at this point because you want it to just absorb nutrients as fast as possible whilst the tank's settling in. Okay, 
Well, okay, guys, that's everything. That's the full tour sort of done. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't want to go on too much because I don't want the video too long. Otherwise, you know, it's just pointless. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. There's lots coming soon, so stay tuned. Just get subscribed if you haven't already because this is going to be good. I've got I've got so many so much planned. So, cheers. See you later.